Hello guys, I'm Ria Deshwal. You're back on my channel Crux of English and today we're going to continue with the literary theory feminism. There have already been two parts of this literary theory. So if you haven't watched the two parts, you should go watch them first because it talks about the literary theory and the writers that came before. So today uh, there are four writers that we are going to talk about. The first one is Simone de Beauvoir. I think you have heard her name. She was in a relationship with Saath. I hope you have heard her name. He was a writer who is very famous for giving existentialism. Existentialism is another literary theory. So it was given by Saath. He did a lot of work on existentialism and they were in a relationship. Now let's talk about the books that Simone de Beauvoir wrote. The first one uh, is Second Sex. The second, Mandarins. Third, Adieu. And it is a farewell. This is the subtitle to Saat. This book is dedicated to Saat. And uh, these are the books that you need to remember of Simone de Beauvoir. So now let's talk about the most important one, which is Second Sex. This is the book that we are going to talk about because this is important in uh, context of feminism. Okay. Second Sex. I think everyone knows what Second Sex is. It it's in the title. We've always um, we've always known that women are known as the Second Sex. Men would be the first sex, and uh, as I've said before, how are women defined? Is whatever men is not is women. You cannot. Def you have not uh, culturally established that you def don't define men as what women are not. But culturally, we have always been defining women as whatever men are not. This is exactly what the feminism was supporting. Ki, uh, why are uh, men the important ones? Why are they the first sex and why are women the second sex? Okay, they also this uh, book started with this question, which is important. This has been asked before, and you just seen it. What is women? This was the question where the book, this book started. So Simone de Beauvoir wrote this as the first line of this book what is women so uh, she has put women in mystical uh hum sabko pata hai mystical kya hota hai mystical is whatever is uh, not defined by reality so mystical ways mein women ko define kiya hai unhone different characters mystical characters rakhe hain that are defining women in this uh, book of uh, is me obviously uh, oppression of women the Kaya Gaya, which is the running theme of feminism. So you need to remember that as well. Okay. So this was about Simone de Beauvoir. Now let's talk about the second writer today, which is Kate Millett. We're talking about Kate Millett. Kate Millett was a writer which was uh, writing in the late 1900s, okay, the 20th century. She is also part of second wave feminism. There's only one book that you need to remember and you need to remember the concept of this book as well. It's called Sexual Politics. So Sexual Politics basically, up. Uh, it's about uh, politics that is related to sex. So uh, he, she says that women and men are involved in power structures because of which men are given more power in the society and women have less power with, because of which they are actually oppressed. So she talks about the politics that is being played by different sexes in order to succeed in this power structure because of which men have been able to play this power well just because women are the ones that are being oppressed. So what she says in this sexual politics is that men and women are playing politics. Khel rahe. This is about sex and politics. 
सो ये सब पॉलिटिक्स खेल रहे हैं मेन एंड वुमेन ये सब एक पावर स्ट्रक्चर का पार्ट है और इस पावर स्ट्रक्चर में क्योंकि ये सब पॉलिटिक्स खेल रहे हैं इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आस कि हम एक्चुअली पॉलिटिक्स को इसको ख़त्म करें इफ़ वी वॉन्ट वुमेन टू बी नॉट सुप्रेस्ड शी ऑल्सो टॉक्स अबाउट शी ऑल्सो टॉक्स अबाउट डिफरेंट राइटर्स इन दिस बुक शी टॉक्स अबाउट डिफरेंट राइटर्स हु हैव गिवन मेल मैस्कुलानिटी पावर ओके सो शी सेज कि लिटरेचर इज अ बिग पार्ट ऑफ दिस कल्चर वे वीमेन आर बींग अप्रेस्ड एंड मैन आर गिवन मोर पावर बिकॉज लेट्स सी द राइटर्स दैट शी टॉक्ट अबाउट वॉज डी एच लॉरेंस लेडी चार्टजीज लव The next that she talked about was Norman Mailer, his book *Naked and the Dead*. And the third one that she talked about was Henry Miller, *Tropic of Cancer*. These were the three books by three writers that she talked about. उन्होंने बोला केट मिलट ने कि इन तीनों बुक्स में एक्चुअली वॉट यू सी इज मेल मिसकुलानिटी मैस्कुलानिटी गिव इन मोर पावर इन दी सेक्शुअल पॉलिटिक्स ओके सो दीज आर द थ्री बुक्स दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर विच केट मिलट टॉक अबाउट ओके द नेक्स्ट राइटर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट इज सैंड्रा एंड सूजन गिलबर्ट they were sisters obviously let's talk about susan gilbert so there's only one book that you need to remember it's called mad women in the attic agar aapne literally literature ko padha hoga if you are a real literature fanatic you would have understood where this uh, name came from so this name came from jane eyre which is a novel written by charlotte bronte okay so in this book the subtitle of the book is women writers and 19th century literary imagination okay this is the टाइटल ऑफ द बुक सो इन दिस बुक बेसिकली वॉट दे से इज कि द मेल सेंटर्ड फिक्शन वर्ल्ड मेल सेंटर्ड फिक्शन बुक्स जितनी भी होंगी वहाँ पे वीमेन आर ओनली पोर्ट्रेड इन टू लाइट इधर दे वुड बी दी एंजल्स और दे वुड बी दी मॉन्स्टर्स ओके सो वीमेन जो बेसिकली जितना भी मेल सेंटर्ड फिक्शन होगा उसमें कैसे प्रेजेंट की जाएंगी इधर एज एंजल्स और मॉन्स्टर्स एंजल्स कौन होंगी जो मेन की बात सुनेंगी द वुमेन हु आर गुड टू मेन द वुमेन हु आर लिसनिंग टू मेन दे आर मिसिव एंड दे आर फेमिन दोज वुड बी द एंजल्स लाइक वर्जिन सेड एंजल्स इन दाउस and the ones who are rebellious who are doing what they want to do they would be known as the monsters so here would be all the feminists and here would be all the submissive women in the house okay so this is what they were talking about this is the concept that they gave okay now let's move on the next writer that we are going to talk about is एलेन शो एल्टर आई होप आप सबने एलेन शो एल्टर का नाम सुना होगा शी इज़ अ वेरी पॉपुलर राइट हो शो एल्टर द फर्स्ट बुक दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर ऑफ हर्स इज लिटरेचर ऑफ देयर ओन शी रोट इन्वेंटिंग हर सेल्फ she also wrote hysteria hysterical epidemics and modern media she 
so in literature of their own she was talking about how literature is being developed by female writers okay in inventing herself she talked about female icons jo history mein female icons rahe hain writers ya fir otherwise movements jinhone participate kara hai un sab ke bare mein ellen uh, schwartz ne is wali book mein baat kiya then hysteria hysterical epidemics and modern media what she says is ki females are connected to hysteria females are connected to hysteria this is a psychological condition if you don't know what hysteria is you should google it and you would know it's a psychological condition where women uh, not just women women and men they are uh, like you know a little bit unstable mentally and they have delusions and they see things so hysteria is basically related to females and it has been since victorian age so she talks about how this has been related to women in this book then there is the fourth the fourth book that she talks about fourth book that she talks about is female melody female melody basically the subtitle of it is women madness and english culture she talks about how uh, the females have been connected to madness from victorian to modern age in this book okay you have to remember this how women are connected to hysteria and madness who who talked about this is ellen schoelter now the fifth book that she talked about is women as a critique so this is important listen to me very carefully so basically ellen show elter defined feminism in two ways she says women are seen as reader or women are seen as writer so they say ki jab uh, the female is the passive consumer of any text male or written by male or a female then they are the reader of the text but if the females are actually uh, writing themselves then that would be that would actually make them she gave this new concept called gymno criticism so be gyno criticism so basically what is gyno criticism is when a female critic talks about a female writer सो so, जब एक क्रिटिसिज्म एक फीमेल से किया जाएगा एक फीमेल राइटर का तो उसको हम गायनो क्रिटिसिज्म बोलते हैं दिस वॉज दी कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वॉज गिवन बाई एल एन शो एल्टर एंड बेसिकली शी सेज की फेमिनिज्म दो तरह से ही दिख सकता है आपको लिटरेचर में एक वेन फीमेल्स आर एज रीडर्स शी सेज दैट दिस इज नॉट रियल फेमिनिज्म बिकॉज यहाँ पे आप मेल से ओप्रेस्ड भी हो जाते हैं कल्चरली मेल्स कैन सप्रेस यू थ्रू द राइटिंग बिकॉज यू डेवलप दिस resistance okay this was another concept that she gave of resistance the field of resistance so what happens is when you are a female and you are reading a male's perspective what you do is you develop this concept of resistance in your head and you uh, think that whatever they are writing is right and you are not uh, actually whatever the males are portraying about females that becomes right because of the female of female field of resistance okay so this is what happens if he, the female is a reader and if she is a writer then they, that could produce gyno criticism which is a female critic talking about a female writer okay the here both of them has to be females okay yahan pe kya ho sakta hai the reader could be female or male or the writer could be female or male okay so this was the concept that was given by her another concept that was given by ellen schoelter was of division of uh, history history of women of feminism she divided them into three parts ellen schoelter divided the history of women into three parts the first part would be the feminine part the second part would be the feminist part and the 
third part would be the female part so this lasted from 1840 to 1880 this lasted from 1880 to 1920 and this is from 1920 to present this uh, was basically when there was male dominance male dominance tha or female writers to write they were writing they were writing with the aesthetic of the male dominance they were still under the male thumb aur unko is cheez se koi khas problem nahi thi but they were still writing for example bronte sisters george eliot these were the writers that were prominent female writers that were prominent in the feminine phase now the feminist phase here uh, the writers had started evolving and they were female writers they were uh, revolting against the male dominance they were um, against male dominance it can also be seen in the whole feminist phase and this is the present so what happens in the present is that the whole concept of oppression is a little bit ओल्ड ऑनेस्टली आज की डेट में आप देखेंगे तो वुमेन को कोई भी अपॉर्चुनिटी ऐसा नहीं है कि नहीं दी जा रही है आप इंडिया में भी देखेंगे तो फीमेल्स को आजकल सब चीज़ें दी जा रही है स्पेशली इफ़ यू वुड कंसिडर द रोल्स दैट वुमेन आर प्लेइंग स्पेशली अभी आप देखोगे तो एन डी ए में आर्मी में वुमेन को परमानेंट पोस्ट दी गई है विच इज़ अ ह्यूज डील फॉर इंडिया बिकॉज यू आर लेटिंग वुमेन टेक द पोजिशन ऑफ पावर इवन इन the war situations okay another uh, important thing that you can see is kamla harris she is an indian she is an asian uh, south asian female who is um, serving as the vice president of united states which is a huge deal considering that she has two minorities to deal with first is asian second is a female so today females are not lagging behind they are the equals of any male dominant society okay now the last writer in feminism that we are going to talk about is helena sykes so helena sykes the book that uh, you need to remember is love of medusa she was a french writer and uh, this book is also in french okay so in this book she gave two major concepts that you need to remember the first is anti love she says ki women are treated this way women are brought up this way in their family that they develop this habit of anti love they develop this quality of anti love what is anti love that they start hating themselves usually we are told on a daily basis that we should love ourselves so what she says is she says ki hum aise bade kiye jate hain females women aise bade kiye ja rahe hain ki unko khud se nafrat hone lagi hai they have started this feeling of anti love towards themselves rather than feeling love towards themselves and being proud of who they are they have started hating themselves this is what was the first concept given by helena sykes the second was of erichter feminism erichter feminism is basic uh, sorry erichter feminin erichter feminin is a type of writing she says which is filled of gaps and disruptions so what she says is ki females na itna dari rehti hai for writing ki jab wo likhengi when they write they basically are interrupted by their own thoughts by this concept of anti love they are interrupted even if they are trying to put themselves out there putting all of their energy out there whatever they have in their thoughts they are disrupted in their thought process and because of which this gives rise to erichter feminine writing she also says this can be seen in male writers uh, the example that she gave was of james joyce she says that james joyce is a male writer and his writing is filled with erichter feminine okay so this was about helena sykes and that would conclude the whole literary theory of feminism i know these uh, writers the last ones were very short 
they are smaller writers comparatively to you know virginia or like they are bigger names in feminism so that was it for feminism i hope you like this and i hope uh, i give you all the information that you needed do study it again and again and uh, i think repetition is the key for um, solving any problem of yours or to clear any exam aapko zaruri nahi hai ki aap dher dher sara padhe it's very important ki aap jo bhi pad rahe hain usko aap bar 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 repeat kare because repetition is the key aap jitna zyada repeat karenge utna zyada aapko cheeze yaad rahengi aur aap utna zyada acha perform kar payenge main aapko ek chhota sa example deti hu there are questions which uh, you know when you see mcqs na you see an mcq okay there are four options 1 2 3 4 the thing is when you read once or twice and you are uh, you're like you know this is something that i know and it's all right for example i'll give you this example uh, it's really dumb so ts eliot you all know about ts eliot right so there was this question asked uh, if he is an anglican or something like that like the question was asked about his religion you know what i knew the question i was very well aware of the question but i got cocky and i was like you know uh, when i was studying ki this is not important this is not something ki bahut zyada uh, it would be asked so uh, this was in the paper of uh, up technical education wala jo lecture wala paper hua tha in that this question was asked and because of my cockiness because of how i was treating that you know this is not difficult i'll remember it i got confused between ang Anglican and Catholic, honestly, because it's very important for you to not just when you uh, when you're remembering something now, when you're reading something on the paper in your home, you're like you know you are in a comfortable position. There is no pressure around, and you're like, "Ki thik hai, ye to ho hi jayega." You know, this is not difficult. But जब आप वहाँ पे चार ऑप्शन देखते हैं ना it gets really confusing for you because आपके पास और बहुत सारे प्रेशर होते हैं उस पॉइंट पे प्रेशर के साथ साथ ना ये जो चार पॉइंट्स होंगे ये बहुत क्लोज होंगे एक दूसरे के बहुत ज़्यादा क्लोज होंगे जिसकी वजह से आपको बहुत ज़्यादा कन्फ्यूजन क्रिएट होगा इसलिए आपके लिए बहुत ज़्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है चीज़ों को बार 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 पढ़ना ओके सो आई टोल्ड यू समथिंग सम एर आई मेड आई होप दैट मेड यू फील लाइक यू नो everyone makes errors okay this is not a big deal you will clear your exam just you have to repeat repeat and repeat so go watch my videos and i hope uh, this was helpful thank you for watching please like subscribe and share my channel uh, new videos on literary theory would be coming soon the next we will start another literary theory in the next video okay thank you for watching